The book is called Slinky Hell. The author is one of Vancouver's top comics. His name is Jacob Samuel, and he's here with us right now. Now, you could probably see Jacob at any one of the 20-plus venues in Vancouver. You can see him there with his notebook and pen. You're always very studious. You're always taking notes. And Just on the pe other people there, on who I don't like, you know. Well, no, I think you're writing jokes, right? I don't really write it uh, when I'm when at shows. I actually like I tr I try to write a lot like carefully beforehand alone. I don't like to write around people. I actually don't like to take like a set list on stage too because then I I use it as a crutch. It's better to remember, I think. Right? Is it good to remember? Well, do you have a good memory? <laughs> um, if I don't, oh, well, I blank. I can blank out on stage pretty badly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's you... like a uh, weakness, I would say. I, I've seen Jacob many times. He looks very natural up there. Uh, he's always busy doing showcases. Uh, what do you really want the public to know about Jacob Samuel? What do I, want them, well, I think it's more about what I don't want them to know, <laughs> which is how boring I am. <laughs> uh, this past uh, year, you were busy at the Winnipeg Comedy Festival. What was that experience like? Well, it was good because I was very prepared. <laughs> it was great. Well, it, 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 it was... It was uh, it was actually fantastic. It's weird. I was talking about this with a friend of mine who's a comic, and it's like you do comedy, and it's so rare when you can just show up to a show and perform. So it's like you do so many things. You're producing shows. The shows aren't like super. There's no stage manager ever. <laughs> then you go to a festival, and like there's like there's you know like hair and makeup. There's like it's real show business for like 15 minutes of your life, and then you're back out on the streets. <laughs> So the experience is great, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I'll see what the tape looks like, but yeah, it's like you get to perform in a huge theater where people are listening and they don't have drinks around them. Who? What a what a concept. Yeah. Well, that's that's what it's like when you're at the top. And Jacob is vastly uh, getting there. He's a finalist here tonight at the we're Yukoff. Canada. We're all we're in the it's the top of the bottom middle. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's be realistic about where this is situated. Well, uh, jokes aside, editing is such a big part of the writing process, and uh, I'd like to know, maybe you could tell our viewers, your fans, what the process is like, because when you write a joke, it doesn't end there. It goes on until you feel it's perfect, right? Um, yeah, well, I feel like, never perfect, but until it's like enough. I think that you, well, I think the key with, the way I write, approach joke writing is I write a ton of ideas and I try them out and the ones, you try to only work on the ones that have like juice to them, that have legs. Because you realize, you say, you're like, oh, this is worth working on and this isn't. So you try and allocate your time efficiently and uh, you have to cut, you have to kill a lot of your babies. Like it's, a lot of it is just a brutal attrition. It's yeah. just, I think the best way to write jokes is to write a lot and get rid of almost all of them. Well, that leads to the next question. Are you ever satisfied with your performance on stage? Um, I would say that I'm content. Like, I'd be like, oh, I'm ha proud of myself for doing this. I did my best. I'm never satisfied, <laughs> ever. How can you be, like, it's, it's so hard to be satisfied. If, you, if I was satisfied, why would I do this? Yeah. True enough. If I was satisfied, I'd, I'd look around. I'd be like, nothing's wrong with the world. My life is great. <laughs> I don't need to write jokes, you know? So you're not really being hard on yourself. You're just... You're being realistic about how you can keep improving, right? I think I'm perpetually dissatisfied with everything, and this is a great outlet for it. That's just what, it's like you're just like at a certain point, you look around the world, and you're like, I don't think this is ever going to really work out. Like, I'm never going to be totally okay with this. Right. But one thing's for sure, uh, while the crowd is judging you, you cannot allow them to make you feel any weaker or smaller so how do you let those emotions roll while you're performing? Um, well, they used to affect me more because I think it's like it becomes like not to get too into spiritual stuff, but it becomes like an exercise. It's, it's like that with life. You have to at certain points to suspend, right? You're like, does it really matter? And this is stupid. It doesn't, this is not something that really matters in life. So this, I, yeah, sorry, it's perspective, you know? Yeah, this is somebody that knows how to have fun. Yeah. He's, a, he's a great writer, yeah. and uh, you guys have to get out and see Jacob Samuel. He's one of my favorite comics in the city, and we thank you for your time, and we wish you good luck tonight at the Yuckoff. Thanks for having me. All right.
Stay tuned. That was Jacob Samuel. Hi, I'm Jacob. And uh, what I want to know by applause is who else here identifies as being a cautious drinker? Well, this should be relatable. Uh, when I drink, I'm always very careful. I always follow the rhyme, beer before liquor, you've never been sicker. Liquor before beer, you're in the clear. So I've been thinking, why don't we have rhymes like that for other substance abuse scenarios? <laughs> right, so like beer before pot, why not? <laughs> or heroin before beer, you've ruined your life. <laughs> Well, look, I don't really know a lot about hard drugs. Uh, growing up, no one really gave them to me. I think it's probably because I've always looked this responsible. Right? I look like the kind of guy who has a lot of strong opinions about Statistics Canada. For the longest time, I thought that MDMA was just a form of mixed martial arts. It took me 26 years, 26 years to find out that anyone I knew did cocaine. That's 26 years of just thinking everyone was really excited because it's something happening in the other room. Right, and no one, no one told me. I had to find out. I was at a house party and I was exploring all the rooms because I'm creepy like that. So I opened the door and a bunch of people doing coke and did they invite me in? No, they shut the door immediately. Because apparently, I have a face that ruins cocaine. Right, no one wants to do blow with a responsible Jew who talks like a drowsy Ray Romano. I had, I had to get back into online dating a couple months ago, my least Dating, least favorite dating website is Plenty of Fish. And it has nothing to do with the website, it's the expression it's based on. Because it's when you say to someone, oh, don't worry about being single, there's plenty of fish in the sea. And as a society, we need to stop saying that. Because that is not consistent with how things are going <laughs> for life in our oceans right now. Right? An environmentalist would say, worry about being single. A lot. Because there are barely any fish left. There is plenty of garbage in the sea, so... Yeah. I hope you like making it with wet plastic. And also, the deeper you go into the ocean, the uglier the fish get. <laughs> a lot of women who go on dates with me get turned off once they find out that I'm a jazz lover. Yeah, see, no one's stoked about it at all. It's <laughs> one dude who whistles. I mean that in two ways. One, I enjoy the music, but two, I'm a jazz lover because the way I make love is like jazz. Because the way I make love is not very popular. Uh, I start off with a few familiar moves and then an hour of weird improv uh, that will put you to sleep. And once a year, there's a festival. So as I mentioned before, I am a Jew. And I love the word Jew. I love saying it, but a lot of people will hesitate to say it because they're worried that it might be offensive. And I want you to know that it's not. Unless you're pointing, but otherwise... <laughs> or carrying a torch, but otherwise... Like, it's fine. You can all call Jews Jews. Of course, we prefer the term doctor, but... <laughs> Some of you may not know this, but the worst thing you can call a Jew is kike. And to me, that's a very confusing racial slur. 
because kike just sounds like an Australian person <laughs> saying cake. <laughs> so if I ever heard a group of Australians be like, oh yeah, let's grab a knock, let's lock up a car, I'd be like, oh no, one of two things could happen right now. <laughs> Either anti-Semitism or dessert. So, for me, just like a regular birthday. <laughs> I consider myself to be a cultural Jew, and what that means is that I identify as Jewish, but at the same time, I'm also an atheist. So, I'm a Jew in the same way that I'm a fan of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I have no faith in the organization at all. But if a miracle happens, I'm showing up in the jersey. I believe this whole time. My name is Jacob Samuel, it's a pretty Jewish name. Actually, it's a stage name. Samuel is my middle name. And I use it on stage because to me, Jacob Samuel sounds like the right amount of Jewish for this. Because my real name is way too Jewish for a mainstream audience. Because it's Jacob Goldfiddler on the roof. And yeah, it's, it's, it's hyphenated. you guys know about Jews? If you don't know a lot, all you need to know is that we're just the hipsters of religion. Because we got the original Bible like 3,000 years ago, and we have refused every single upgrade since. Like, we're on the iPhone 1 of religion. Right? We only enjoy God's early work. Right? Before he sold out and had a kid. And listen, if you're not laughing at that, uh, it's fine. But you should know, these are not obscure references. Okay? This is pretty basic stuff. So if you're confused right now, might I recommend books? You'd be doing the rest of us a huge favor. I read a lot about uh, other religions. Christianity, I think, fascinates me the most for a couple reasons. Uh, the first is that religious Christians, like, they don't have, they don't dress differently. Other religions, religious people, you can tell by the way they dress, but religious Christians just sneak up on you. It's easy to offend them. They might be among us right now. Right? At least with religious Jews, they have the black hats and the sideburns. You see them coming down the street and go to your friend, shut up for five minutes about how great foreskin is. <laughs> Let them pass, right? And then we can resume our normal sidewalk conversation. <laughs> Christianity is also the only religion that clearly has a hot prophet. Right, like other faiths do not have that. The Buddha, fat and bald. But most Indian gods, too many arms. Unless you're really into hand jobs, right? From an elephant. But it, like in, Judy, in Judaism and Islam, it's forbidden to have any images of God. But I think in Christianity, it's forbidden for Jesus not to be a babe all the time. Like, he's always so hot in all the paintings and stained glass. In the statues, he has, like, very nice abs. To me, that's the original CrossFit. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Uh, my name's Jacob Samuel. From Yuck Yucks. Are you ready? Yeah. Third. Oh, that's me do that. That's me do that. Very nice sound. But as soon as you come in, you're going to go around here right away. Okay. Good job.
job, and good luck to you. <laughs>